Today, today's video is strictly going to be about why you should be afraid of postpartum. <laughs> My former video, I did why pregnancy is dangerous. Uh, so people were coming for me and saying, oh, like, you shouldn't scare people about pregnancy. Pregnancy is this, it's beautiful, it's that. I know that, I'm aware. Like, I have my son, who is like the love of my life. But it doesn't take away, take away from the fact that pregnancy is like really dangerous. Personally, I passed out when I was pregnant. Like, I was literally, like the, the matron literally started hitting me like I should wake up. Like, I was, I was so exhausted, like super exhausted. And there are many people that die from pregnancy. Many people, that, their children die from It's It's a life and death situation. Like, there is no way you can mentally prepare yourself for pregnancy. You have to be pregnant to see what is so crazy about it. And it is crazy. It's a lot. It's not easy. So you should know before you get pregnant of what you're putting yourself into and what it's like. So you don't feel like you are the only one. Like, oh my goodness, my pregnancy is so awful. It's not. Many women go through it. So you shouldn't feel like not only you the thing they do. Like, it's good to hear other people talk about it. So you feel like, oh, no, be only me this thing happen to. Exactly. So today, we're going to be talking about postpartum. Woo! I've heard so many stories from women with babies and children, and they tell me their postpartum stories, and I'm like... I've heard postpartum stories like people with serious, like severe postpartum depression where they don't even want to touch their kids. They don't even want to look at the children they spent nine months caring and loving. Now they don't even want to stare at them. They don't want anything to do with them. They just want to be alone. Like so crazy like to think that the hormones can mess you up so bad that you just feel so much severe anxiety you just want to be left in you you don't even want the child you gave birth to, to come close to you sometimes i don't care how much research you've done nothing nothing <laughs> this can't really disturb me it's stressing me out Nothing will prepare you for postpartum. I can hit my chest. Let me go straight to the points I have because I, I cannot deal. Ah, me, they do, me, they do, me, they do. Number one postpartum problem. When you birth the child, yeah? When you birth the child, usually they perform something called episiotomy, I'll be episiotomy, I'll be episiotomy. Me, me, I don't know. I don't know the term, but I know the action. They tear your vagina before your child come outside. Usually, when it's your first child, because your vagina is no cool, it's not large like that. It's quite tiny. So for me personally, they did tear. They tore my vagina. So when they tore, I didn't even know. You see, they do me down there. It passed tearing. You know. So I wasn't really aware. I didn't know what was happening. My husband was there throughout the whole birthing process. He saw everything. So he was once telling me the time they tore my vagina. I'm like, I had no clue. That is tear your vagina. Baby comes out. They, my own hospital, they, they didn't give me child. I don't go to the hospital again. They didn't put child on my chest. They carry and go, they give her something for one side. Anyhow, shall born and thank God for the doctor. Say, you shall bring my big heart in peace, not in pieces. Anyhow, that is child will come outside. Guess what? They go so your nyash. They do have shred new. When they are done, then they will now ship you back to the room that you go and sleep with your baby. Then they ship me back there. I just lay down on some um, some cloth. I don't know. I don't know what they call it. So that all the blood, the amount of bleeding you go bleed. Ah. You go call the woman and say, "She not dead. Please, am I dying? She this blood is not so much. Hello, doctor. Are you coming to check on the blood? Because I'm feeling gallons now." The blood is excessive. The amount of blood like that comes out of you after you give birth. What you you? It's a lot. So you they'll put you on some put you on some white cloth on your bed and everything so that it just keeps soaking and then you have like some heavy the pad the pad they, they put for person in your when they burn. <laughs> if I is to keep person like this, you'll get my grain. It's heavy. The pad is thick. Thick, thick white, like thick is this heavy, thick, long, white. You put it in your pants, wear pants, and then you still sit on the bed just to tell you how much blood you are producing. So after that part, they're still going to put it. And trust me, you will fill the bed, you will fill it up. The doctor will come, the nurse will come, change your thing, and put another one. 
So it's quite a lot. So after they sew your nyash, now you go to relax. You don't really, really know what's going on at now. You don't really see what's happening. Because you have not really seen them. They are still lying down bed. When they now reach time to carry your shine, you won't even see them. Ah, and then you go look. So they shoot me for nyash. And then you come, they adjust. You come, they adjust. <laughs> Ah, I, I adjust a tire. You can't adjust like this. You, there's no way that be comfortable. You can't use one side, they sit down. They carry your picky. Yeah, my baby. But something down there is choking your destiny. Yeah, what's my turn now? Say, after the bond, they'll sew your nyash. They'll sew your nyash finish. You know, you'll be you very uncomfortable. You know, if you work out like a normal person, you'll come to work out like a person who carry blockers for inside a nyash. Lack of sleep. Something I'm very passionate about because I see it, I go through it and I experience it to the point where I can't they ask, say, she is speaking, she is all right so. So make a car and go back to the doctor, make it check out for me. Jaden did not used to sleep more than one hour 30 minutes at night. So every one hour 30 minutes is up, he's sucking breast. So I had like um, one hour 30 minutes of sleep. Sometimes I said it was 15 minutes. So you give him breast, he suck, he doze off for the boobs. Oh yeah, now put him for a bed. No, put him for the bed and see what will happen. You go, you go, you go, you go. Before you drop him, you go do Mind you, you've not sleep. It's two a.m. in the morning. You go sit there awake for daytime because picking need to suck breast. I see it, my eye cleared. You go do it again. You go carry. You go carry him again. You not go to play. You go suck again. You go do So tell you, you go say, I beg, make it just in my hand. Because this is getting too much. It's better make it sleep. Ah, then they will come get hiccups. Hiccup. Small children. That's their friend. They are like this. Before you say make it drop and make it sleep. You don't open one again, you don't shake the around. I'm just like, oh Jesus Christ, stop that sort. Is this how everybody's living? I've been mean, only me, God just wants to shake shake it. Or what's really going on? I don't know. I, I questioned God in that time. I questioned whether I was really ready to be a mother. I questioned everything because I was so so stressed. I barely slept. And then even if you won't even sleep, how you want to do it? Your breast not go allow you. How you want to allow you? Your breast go turn to block. Rock! You now you go even go wake up again. Oh, excuse me, please can we go? <laughs> Come and get this stuff out of me. I had mastitis twice. Two times. It's the worst thing in the world. Your breast go the breath like Oh god of course you know bless your body. Your breast will be like stone. It's not there's nothing there, the nothing. If I made the picking, if I did everything, I somebody said you should have Put hot water. I put hot water. I was pressing, pressing, pressing all the breast. Come outside, not seeing. It still did not work. I shook my nipple inside salt. I put cabbage. I and the funny fact was when I, when Jane was small, I had like um, oversupply, so I was my supply was uh, excessive. Mother will show you shady. That's all I can say. Sleepless nights is crazy. And those times, there is nobody in the world, nobody in this whole wide world that you hate more than your husband. You will hate your husband. Let me tell you. In sleep, but they disgust you. Like, how dare you? You will lie And then you are, and breastfeeding picking you, they sleep. Go be your spam, cause all this for her with this. So if you don't be your spam, share this problem with them. So trust me, you're gonna so persevere in love. Make sure say you love your husband for daytime because for night, you can shook him something. Yeah. And they tell you, say, you finish, you can't sound so. And to be honest, I felt bad for my husband because in the morning he had to go to work, he had to do stuff. And like, I couldn't wake him up that, okay, like, can you handle this baby so that I sleep? Like, I was sleepless. And Jenny was breastfeeding from my boobs. So, it was so hard for me, guys. It was really hard. My mom, too, was extremely tired because during the day, she was taking care of my feeding, cooking for me like cleaning JD up and doing things so that even when he's taking a nap I can also quickly take a nap like and his nap no they pass one hour so I have like one hour sleep throughout the day 
throughout the day. Because the time that I'm supposed to be sleeping, that's the time JD I is like this. For night, JD, in I is like Bob. He's so happy and excited to be alive. After you born, maybe you go shit. You go shit, Abby. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what's crazy? It's a mind game. <laughs> it's a mind game. Let's say I just born now. I won't go shit. The thing don't they do me like say I want shit to, for money. Or the thing can say, ah, I want to shit the shit. So where? Afternoon will come again. The thing they do me like, I want to do where, 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 for my anus. Where, 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 where. Shit, oh, shit, oh. You'll not know whether not the vagina the she's not from us having an anus because the pain is everywhere. You're gonna do like what if I overshit and then my uterus come aside? You know, it's possible. <laughs> Cause it just burns everywhere and raw. You see when they keep saying, ah, when you breastfeed, all the weights will drop. I will drop. You will go down. The picking because they suck everything. Your appetite. Have you heard of appetite? Have you heard of food cravings? Doing breastfeeding? The one way you do for pregnancy, that was a small girl. She's a little girl. Where breastfeeding appetite today? Oh, lo, lo, lo. I know how many KFC chicken I chop. My husband will buy KFC chicken like six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He go to tell me, say, ah, if I feel remain, make I remain. I go to tell us, I don't feel remain. You buy it for two of us. He go say yes, I say, ah. I know this one was I see so and I go chop and chop and clean. Yeah. I will chop it clean. Pregnancy and uh, breastfeeding cravings. That's why you see that most women when they give birth, that's when the weight starts to adding. Not even for pregnant. Now when they're born, when they start to breastfeed. I was 70 kg when I born. As of when I started to breastfeed, I was 73. That was if I would be mindful. See her. Gloria, are so free though. This chocolate way they shop, this cookie way they shop. You go see her tomorrow, no Russia. <laughs> so when you give birth, they will tell you to come with your baby like three days later or something. I came when I my daughter, my daughter was telling me that ah, that now that I've given birth, there are a couple of uh, contraceptive options so that I don't take in again quickly. I did look and like say, ah, oh God. You they see the person where you they thought the way I tell you can't come here, you like it. I be like the person who do sex now. I be like the person where they romance. I don't need contraception. <laughs> My mind is made up. <laughs> eh? Control what? And do I do I resemble person that can need it? Do I resemble person that want to do sex? That that talk in the tire room. I to be honest with you, because as the doctor they talk, it's like make sure you wait for at least six weeks. Make sure you wait for at least six six weeks. I think I waited for like three months or there about. I heard there are the women that wait for about a year. Why, especially their first children. See, trust me, there's a lot of fear factor. Where you want you to be the the place where they so, your mind will they dream for you like. Already, and you yourself, you are not even feeling sexy. You understand? Because first of all, your stomach is already, you are still pregnant, to be honest with you. Your stomach is still in front of you. Yeah, you are not able to still see your nyash when you are bathing. Mm -hmm. Then you have added small weights. Mm -hmm. Your skin discoloration is still there. Your skin still lacks more. You still get, I guess, spots eh, for my body that time. So you are not really feeling yourself yet. To so now add. Where you want to have sex. Oh God, let's say you go hold yourself a little bit. Call me myself. I'm not okay. I'm not alright. Ah, doctor, they tell me to make a do contraception. Contra what, sir? Oh my goodness. This man is obsessed with me. Hello? Hello to something that I did not expect. So when Jenny was about three, four months, I swear I thought I would not have hair loss because my hair loss was not, I was not losing any hair. My hair was still coming out the same. When in knock four months, ah, uh, I was not saying it that, it like say this one past hair, postpartum hair loss because my hair is, well, even till now, like, my hair did not fall out predominantly because I feel like I don't do a lot of styles that will stress my hair. Like, I don't do... Like Bob Mali, you guys know I only just pack my hair every other day. I don't get styled past this one. So I feel like 
my hair did not fall out as much. But trust me, when I'm washing my hair, the amount of hey, wait, wait, this. the amount of hair that falls out of my hair, it was so much. Like every other day, the, the drain was clogging. I would have to tell my husband, baby, please can you help me come and clean? Because me, things they quickly irritate me. And they see with things, and they see things where they irritate. Even though I make us, I can't see it. So I'll tell my husband to come and help me clean it. To help me clean it. Next week again, I wash my hair. Same thing. Ah, guys, I lost a ton of hair. So if you don't have hair on your head naturally, I'm sorry for you. Maybe you just bab it. They make breastfeeding feel like such a natural process. It's so natural. It's just something we do as humans. It's not natural anything. When you're about to start breastfeeding, it be like mathematics. It be like algebra. At first, when I um, gave birth to Jade, Jade did not latch onto my boobs. He didn't know how to latch. So, he wasn't even able to latch onto the nipple to even suck it out. So, I had to buy a pump. And then I was pumping, like, um, pumping it out. It was coming out like, um, you see when you pinch, like, tiny pimples. Very tiny pimples. Pimples were not even really dead there before. You just see me, you do it, they don't send you. Come pinch. I see that small water will come outside. That's how the breast milk was coming out. It go come. I go just see, see small water there my nipple. I say, ah, thank God, oh. I see small. I go rub my give. I struggled. I was not calling my friend Sarah. I was telling her that Sarah, my breast milk is not coming. I don't know what's going on. She's like, don't worry, it will come. Give it like three to four days to come. I'm like, you people are not seeing what I'm seeing. It's not coming. So at the time we're giving Jaden formula. He had not started taking breast milk. So I will press, I will press, I will press. My hand, this whole hand will they pay me. I will press, I will press, I will. Wait till you come now. Maybe if you spit for that, like cut. Spit? The quantity of that small spit, that's the only breast milk I have. I will do it again every like 30 minutes, every one hour, just to make sure that the breast was come. So you have to keep making sure you are pumping or breastfeeding like a lot. So that I get a lot of supply. It is so tough. Like those first few weeks of breastfeeding, it is not easy. My friend was telling me that just try your best to pass through those first two weeks of breastfeeding. Because once you do, it gets easier. And it truly does get it gets easier. Because once your supply starts coming in, everything is regulated, it's so much better. But you see that process of trying to get your supply to come in. Oh, damn it. It's so tough. You feel so incompetent because you're just like, shame my own breast, no work. Bless my breast, no, no, say I don't burn. Every time your baby is sucking, you are like feeling pain. Like I remember, I'll be so breastfeeding Jaden like this, and then I'm like, mm, 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 mm. like I literally be feeling pain. I'll be screaming and shouting because you start feeling like the contraction pain while your baby is sucking. So, yeah, Whew. guys, when you burn. Mm, <laughs> your stomach will be like blum blum like balloon like the air inside your stomach will be doing you like blah, 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 blah. so i think what it is is your uterus has not reduced so your uterus now is empty it's just huge and empty baby is no longer inside so now it just feels like a empty hollow space so you are so uncomfortable like your stomach is just doing blah, 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 blah. after you give birth there is no more you. You are now your baby's mother and your husband's wife. I've spoken about this with most of my friends and they explain the same things to me. Like you see yourself and you're just like, who am I? You have to be a good wife, you have to be a good mother. At the same time, you have to be a good daughter-in-law, good daughter. I feel like I have started to feel like myself lately. Like once Jaden started to hit like 10 months, 11 months, one year, which he is now, I've started to feel myself. I feel like I was so lost in being his mom which that can be the case which is usually the case most of the time especially if you are their like care provider except if like, except you have if you have a nanny that's caring for them then your case might be different but if you are the one caring for your baby all the time it can be tough to remember who you are like it can be really tough and i don't know if this makes sense but if you have a child it should probably make sense to you you begin to realize that you don't even know who you are. You are just your child. I remember the other time I watched an, a video and then the woman was like, when she goes out, all she talks about with her friends is her husband and her child. Husband and child. Oh, my husband said this. Oh, my child did that. And I'm like, that's me. I went to my friends the other day. 
all I was talking about was, oh, my husband said this. Oh, have you seen my baby's picture? Oh, my baby with this. Oh, I'm, I'm into call somebody to go and pick my baby. I, I didn't say a word, guys. I didn't share anything about myself because honestly, there was nothing to share. I had nothing about me that I had improved on, nothing about me that was new. It was just my baby, my baby, my baby, my husband, my baby, my husband, my baby. And I feel like it's so tough for women because once you get to realize that your mates who are not married without kids are doing so much better or being like improving their selves, it takes a toll on you. Your friends who don't have kids, they don't understand your struggles. I was telling my manager about how stressed I am and how hard it is to care for my baby and it's not easy because I'm so sleep deprived and he's like, I heard babies, all they do is sleep. I'm like, at, at night? Motherhood is something that it's just when you enter, you just cannot understand how mothers did it, like how your own mothers, how did they do it, like how did their mothers do it, like how have people been doing this thing that nobody has been talking, like everybody's just quiet, like why are we so quiet, it's, it's, motherhood is so crazy, like this morning I woke up and I was so exhausted, I was so tired, I just wanted to lay on my bed. Well, I heard that Jaden had woken up, so I had to wake up. Like, it was so early, it was 6 a.m., and I just wanted to lie down there and just scroll on my phone. But I can't, because Jaden is up. I have to go and give him breast. I have to give him food. I have to change his diapers. I have to play with him. I have to engage him. Like, anyways, I think one other thing that is really, really hard is weight loss. Because of your new body that you have gotten, trust me, it's not easy. They tell you that the weight will drop on its own. It's not dropping anywhere. It's not going to go anywhere. It's going to be with you. So you have to drop it by yourself. It's not easy because trust me, the mental load, the stress of caring for your child all day, and you think you're not going to go into the kitchen and go and look for chocolate to go and eat. You know, there's a thing called like stress eating. And I feel like that's one of the things that makes most postpartum women, most new moms add so much weight. For me personally, I know that most of the weight I gained was from stress. Like I'll be so stressed throughout the day. I'm just like, I just want some cookies. I just want some nice chocolate. I just want a lot of ice cream. And that's the only thing that will make me happy. And I'll eat it and I'll go to bed and I'll be so excited. Like and I'll be adding so much weight. But then that was the only thing that I could resolve my mind into like making me happy. And it's so hard. It's so so hard like trying to lose weight while catering to your child catering to your husband like for, don't forget you are still married to somebody <laughs> thankfully for me my husband never put any pressure on me to be like a good wife where i'm cooking food like it was just at my pace whatever i eat we eat whatever we order we eat so i feel like it depends on the kind of man you also marry yeah this video is already excessively long thank you so much for watching Bye.